Uh, Max, you're certainly no fan of the Eurozone's policies, and you've repeatedly uh, pointed out the EU's disorganized approach so far. But now there seems to be a, a real solid and sweeping plan. Are you, are you finally placated? Well, the plan is to create a one trillion uh, euro slush fund and to not write off 50 percent of Greek debts. That's a misperception. They're simply going to move it around the fraudulent balance sheets that are being organized to operate together by the IMF. The IMF is taking a bigger role in this euro catastrophe now, which means that the IMF going forward will have a lot more power over these individual sovereigns. There'll be more austerity for the Greek people. Uh, there'll be another bailout required within six months, I guarantee it. Uh, this is a, a, a stopgap measure that is just about dead on arrival. Yeah, stopgap measures though, but do, do you think that in any way they deserve credit for it or can it be justified to postpone at least a Greek default, which if it had happened earlier or perhaps now, it would have been disastrous for both uh, uh, the Greek uh, government uh, as well. So is, it, is there any merit to them putting this out right now? Well, it, de it, depends, it depends on how you uh, define a catastrophe. Uh, for the Greek people, they're losing their sovereignty. And now, I mean, if, uh, if Russia, uh, are they voluntarily going to lose their sovereignty so that the IMF can float trillions of dollars worth of slush bond money? Uh, that's the question you have to ask yourself. Are you willing to trade your sovereignty for IMF board of directors? Uh, are the Greek people willing to trade their sovereignty for a bunch of kleptocratic, corrupt bureaucrats who are following policies that are cooked up by charlatans? Are they willing to make that swap? If they are, then it's a great policy. But they're no longer Greek people. Call them IMFers. You know, when you go to Athens for a vacation, the people you see there are not Athenians. They are IMFers. All right. Well, let's talk about the, uh, the, the, the bailout fund that they're expanding to a trillion uh, euros. Now, some uh, would say that it's not enough, that it has to be bigger, but the EU is planning to uh, extensively leverage it. Uh, and, and this is drawing flack from some, saying that this is, this is very risky, uh, comparing it to, to gambling. But then on the other hand, what option does the EU have? I mean, is this, I mean, this is a way to survive, isn't it? Well, there, it's a dead problem that they're going to cure by adding more debt. That one trillion euros, uh, the president of the EU, uh, Herman von Rompuy, has already said that they can leverage it up to five trillion euros. That'll be in day one. Uh, and so they're trying to solve a debt problem with more debt. Now, the, this, is the, this is the issue. When you expand the debt load in this, in this manner by trillions of euros, you're increasing the complexity of the euro economy uh, by uh, a factor greater than a mere $5 trillion additional debt. You're expanding the complexity by a, a really a much higher degree. You're guaranteeing economic collapse by, in, by in, in increasing the complexity of the system by adding more debt. Uh, this is why this should, should be stopped. In, in the next couple of months, you're, you're going to be able to say that we staved off catastrophe for two months. But if you were truly interested in solving this problem, Greeks would default 100 percent on the fraudulent debt. They would contain their sovereignty and banks would be forced to deal with the bad loans that they made. Why are we molly coddling banks? Why are we uh, giving them one set of laws? and everyone else has a separate set of laws. It's because the IMF and their banking friends have taken a, a position above the sovereignty of any of these countries. They're not elected officials, and yet they are uh, dictating you know, terms to these, these people in these countries. Yeah, speaking That's tyrannical. About, speak, That's speak, absurd. And, and uh, not only that, but it's going to collapse. It doesn't work. Right, but speaking about the, the banks, I mean, they're, they're it's being put a bit of pressure on them. There, I, I read that they are supposed to have 9% in uh, capital buffers by next year. This will be the stress test. Uh, is that putting a, a bit of a pressure on the banking sector that, that, as well? That, that, nine per, that, 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 that 9% increase in capital buffers is going to be borrowed from the slush fund. That's just adding complexity. You're, oh. you're guaranteeing global financial catastrophe by letting these charlatans 
pose these theories that adding debt to a debt problem is going to increase stability. That's insane. Why don't you just give your financial policies, oh, as a matter of fact, we already have. Ben Bernanke and Trichet are financial terrorists. We know this for a fact. Let's just have the terrorists run the world's economy. They're doing a fantastic job. Give them more weapons of mass financial destruction. Give them more debt. It's absurd. Is nobody going to stand up to terrorism? I guess not. Oh, well. <laughs> very quickly, Max, we're running out of time, but very quickly, um, them looking to China. Your thoughts on that? Any sense of security? China, of course, is, uh, has a huge potential loss here. They want to keep this system afloat as long as they possibly can while they grab as much gold as they possibly can. China knows that eventually when the system collapses, we're all going back to a gold standard, and whoever has the most gold is going to look great. Russia's in a great position. The U.S. has a lot of gold, but they've already loaned a lot of it out. So China knows that they've got a lot of gold, uh, but they want to increase their gold stake until this system blows up, as it, I guarantee it definitely will be a lot worse off three months from now and six months from now. You can stick a pin in it. It's definitely going to get worse. All right. Thanks very much for your thoughts there. RT's Max Kaiser talking to us live from Paris.